Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the beginning of Halloween Week 2016 here at SFF 180. I am so glad that you could join me this fine midnight, or whenever you're watching, doesn't matter, all the same, for my very first review this year's All Hallows season. A pair of widowers discover that death may not be the end, but it's probably a good idea to treat it like it is. In The Fisherman. Hi, everyone. Thomas, your illustrious host, as always. I am so glad that you could be here. All right. A richly layered and deeply mythic story all about learning to come to terms with and move on from grief. The Fisherman is a novel that took its author, John Langan, 12 years to write and publish. From a literary standpoint, it's ambitious in a way that very, very few horror novels even attempt. Indeed, for the longest time, mainstream publishers rejected it for being too horror, and genre publishers rejected it for being too literary. Now, death is naturally a theme that is central to horror fiction all across the board, but uh, whereas in most cases the, the genre tends to treat it with an eye towards exploitation, the best horror seeks to examine the ways in which we confront and deal with mortality. The Fisherman offers us two men whose friendship begins in the shadow of death and which, as the story unfolds, will be challenged by the presence of that shadow. Our protagonist is Abe, a widower whose wife Marie fought a very long and brave battle with cancer until there was just no more fight left. Now, Abe has since taken up fishing as part of the process of grieving and recovery, and every weekend, rain or shine, he enjoys casting lures into the many creeks and fishing holes around the Catskills. Now, one terrible day, Abe hears that a co-worker of his, a, a younger fellow named Dan, has lost not only his wife, but his twin boys in an auto accident that Dan himself only survived by being ejected from the car. After a few weeks, Dan returns to work, but he's still so devastated that he's practically catatonic. Now, Dan's tragedy, after all, was a bit different from Abe's, because it is the case, and I know this from personal experience, that when you lose a loved one uh, after a very long and protracted illness, the process of all of that does give you time emotionally and psychologically to prepare. I mean, you certainly grieve for them, but that grief can be somewhat tempered by almost a sense of relief that their suffering is finally, finally over, and they can at last rest in peace. This is a very different thing from losing a loved one who is still in their prime with the full flower of their potential future ahead of them to a random, shocking split second of disaster. Now, Abe, who is, of course, sympathetic, decides to invite Dan, because why not, along on one of his weekend fishing trips, and... After a few days of thinking it over, Dan, to Abe's very pleasant surprise, agrees. So they end up spending many weekends together, sometimes talking, sometimes just hanging out and fishing together. And eventually it seems like Dan is letting the hobby have its therapeutic effect. He even begins talking freely about the accident, to which Abe just listens supportively. Now this is where the story begins to change. One weekend, Dan says that he would like to try a new fishing spot a place called Dutchman's Creek, near the Ashokan Reservoir, near Woodstock. Langan, at this point, begins to introduce a few familiar horror tropes into his story, but he does it with such skill that it, it actually feels welcome. Now, Abe hasn't heard about Dutchman's Creek, but he's happy to try out a new place. But on their way, the men pull into, yes, an old roadside diner, where the locals are like, oh no, when they hear where Abe and Dan are planning to go. Because you see, there is an old local legend about Dutchman's Creek. A tale of deep and abiding evil. And because the rain is really coming down hard outside the diner, why don't you guys just sit and relax while we tell you the story? What follows for the next 150 pages, fully half the length of the novel, is the terrifying story of Der Fischer. Now, ordinarily, I would say that socking a story within a story smack dab right into the middle of a novel, and doing so at great length, would be a pretty ill-advised narrative strategy for a novelist. But I'm not saying that here. Because for one thing, Der Fischer is completely freaking awesome. And for another, because it connects to the theme of Dan and Abe's story. That of how we live with death, and of the necessity and the wisdom of moving on, rather than clinging desperately to that which cannot and should not be clung to. And it sets up the memorably nightmarish events at the book's climax. Now, I won't tell you anything more except to say that while it is tempting to find some kind of Lovecraftian influence in this whole notion of 
horror from the murky depths. Langan is actually, I would say, more closely referencing Old Testament legends about Leviathan and even some Herman Melville. The opening line from this book is even an homage to Moby Dick, even though there is, I will admit, some echoes of H.P. Lovecraft's novel The Case of Charles Dexter Ward present in Der Fischer. But Langan has taken all these disparate influences and made something that is chillingly his own, with some indelible imagery and some real human feeling informing the horror. Yes, to be fair, it can be said that Langan has this Peter Jackson-y tendency to let his story plow on a little longer than it should, a little bit farther past the point at which it has naturally ended. But there's no denying that The Fisherman is an intense bad dream that, just like a dangerous undertow lying beneath the surface of a deceptively calm surf, is just waiting to drag you screaming into its depths. And that is all I have time for in this episode of SFF 180. Tune in again tomorrow night at midnight for another horror review for Halloween 2016. Remember the most important thing, these are reviews, you will not always agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit the like button, share the video far and wide, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is what helps SFF 180 to grow as a channel. And until I see all of you next time, spooky reading.